Hi, my name is Conan Matharson, and here we're going to talk about uh, the different splitting patterns you can see with S2. They can be really useful in physical diagnosis, and S2 is one of those things that sort of doesn't get as much attention as murmurs, so we're going to kind of walk through this a little bit. So this is the diagram we're going to use to kind of think through this, so here's the heart. Uh, and then here what we're going to do is draw kind of a respirogram. So if, uh, if the curve goes up, that's inspiration. If the curve goes down, that's expiration. And what we're going to do is blow up two of the specific areas of that and uh, plot that uh, over time. And what this is going to be on the bottom here is going to be the phonocardiogram. So it's going to be what the heart sounds like. And, and the reason we're blowing it up is because the time scale of how often the heart beats, maybe 60 or 70 beats a minute, is, is uh, much faster than how often you respire, which is, say, 12 or 14 times a minute. So we've drawn our little respiratory curve, and I hope it's reasonable. I hope Dr. Corbridge approves of it. But what we're going to start with for S2, because I think it makes more sense, is actually start with expiration, so the out-breath and then the in-breath. And I, I think that'll help clear things up. So on the top is the respirogram, uh, and the bottom is the phonocardiogram. And we're going to blow up two specific areas. Okay, so that's kind of how we're going to lay things out. And the first thing that happens uh, in the cardiac cycle, I'm going to go back to my original heart. Uh, so, so the right atrium is filling blood in the right ventricle, and the right ventricle and left ventricle start to squeeze. And as soon as they, the, they squeeze in the right ventricular and left ventricular pressures, exceed the respective pressures of the atria, the valves close, the, the uh, AV valves close, and you get S1, which I've drawn here in red. Then the next thing that happens is the right ventricles and left ventricles are ejecting blood out uh, into the aorta and the pulmonary arteries, and so those are kind of open, and then you don't hear that, and then they close. And what happens when they close is that A2 and P2 are, are nearly simultaneous. Um, it turns out that P2 is a little bit after A2, but that tiny little difference of, let's say, 0.02 or 0.03 seconds is inaudible. You can't tell the difference in a normal heart. Uh, you don't really hear that splitting. Splitting is when you can hear two sounds, like the A2 and the P2, separately. So you don't hear splitting when someone has is uh, on an out-breath or is expiring, or not expiring, but is in expiration. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens during inspiration, during an in-breath. So we reset our AV valves here. And the first thing to know is that on inspiration, RV filling increases. So when you take a breath in, you sort of create a suction effect because the intrathoracic pressure drops and blood flows in from the right atrium into the right ventricle. RV filling increases. Okay, so now I've drawn S1. Uh, the AV valves close. And now I've um, opened up the aortic and pulmonary valves as the right ventricle and left ventricle eject. And now we got to kind of slow down a little bit here as we approach A2 and P2. So the first thing that happens is that A2 closes. So you can see the aortic valve in blue here is closed. And I've drawn A2 here on the phonocardiogram. But the pulmonic valve is still open. And because the RV filling increases, it takes longer for the right ventricle to eject blood out into the pulmonary artery. And so that means the pulmonic valve closes a little bit later in time. And so now you can actually hear the difference between A2 and P2. So there, there's the uh, splitting. So this is just kind of um, normal splitting, and we'll go through it again really quickly. So first thing that happens, uh, in expiration, you get S1, mitral and uh, tricuspid valve closure, aortic and pulmonary valves open, aortic and pulmonary valves close more or less simultaneously in expiration. But in inspiration, what happens is the RV filling increases, which means that uh, when A2 and P2 close, they close at a little bit different times, and because it takes longer for the right ventricle to eject the blood, P2 is delayed. So that's called normal splitting. So let's kind of take a look at it. And here what I've done is put that diagram up top. The first thing to realize is that respiration always pushes P2 back. 
except for ASD, which we'll see in a second. And in a normal heart, at expiration, P2 is a little bit after A2, but you can't hear that difference. And at inspiration, P2 is even further after A2. And so, uh, so then you can hear the difference. That's called physiologic splitting, and that's completely normal. So kind of an interesting exercise as an aside, if you have access to a, a regular landline phone, which I don't anymore, most of us don't, but let's say you're at your parents' house and you're at a landline, click, hold the phone up to your ear and press the receiver button down and, and think to yourself how many sounds you hear. And you should hear one. So then when you release that receiver button, think to yourself how many sounds you hear. And at first, I promise you that you're probably just going to think you hear one. But if you listen really closely, you'll be able to convince yourself that you're actually hearing two separate sounds. So like telephones kind of have splitting too. And that, that interval that you hear there is probably the closest interval that you could hear once you train your ear. And, uh, and that's maybe about 0 0.04, 0 0.05 seconds that when you let the receiver button up. Okay, so this is uh, normal physiologic splitting. And here's the real key to understanding why you get um, widened or paradoxical splitting. And that is that certain cardiac abnormalities can modify the timing of A2 and P2, but what they don't do, except for ASD, which is totally different, is change the fact that respiration always pushes P2 back. So we're going to see what the implications of that are. So we've drawn here the normal physiologic splitting. And let's look at left bundle branch block. We could also look at severe aortic stenosis. But an example of something that makes the aortic valve close later because it takes longer for blood to eject out of the left ventricle. So either an electrical delay or a mechanical delay um, can do that. So here's S1 again. Um, the LV contraction is delayed. So what that means is that A2 is actually delayed. So instead of getting A2 right before P2, the next thing we hear actually is P2 which is on time. And then finally we hear A2. So you can hear, see here already at expiration, um, you can hear uh, splitting potentially, and I've exaggerated the drawing here. You might not actually hear any splitting in expiration. You might hear uh, A2 right here. And on inspiration, A2 is delayed. Um, P2 is expected, that is to say it's pushed back a little bit by respiration. Um, and A2 finally comes in. So this is an example of paradoxical splitting. So basically what that means is during expiration, in certain cases with left bundle branch block or, for example, severe aortic stenosis, that's when you hear the splitting because A2 is so delayed. But then inspiration brings P2 closer to A2, and then you don't hear the splitting anymore. So that's called paradoxical splitting. And obviously you can imagine that you might see continuum of effects there. But that's the general idea for paradoxical splitting. Now let's take an example of like, for example, pulmonary stenosis or right bundle branch block, something that delays even further um, the ejection of blood out of the right ventricle. So again, S1. And uh, by the way, S1 can often be split with right bundle branch block, uh, but, but we won't worry about that for right now. OK, so but back to S2. So A2 comes in normally. But then P2 is delayed because it's the right ventricular ejection that is delayed. So you can already hear splitting um, even when the patient is at expiration. And then when you go to inspiration, A2 comes in normally because the left side isn't affected at all. And P2 is already delayed, but guess what? It gets delayed even more because of the respiration. So not only do you hear splitting um, at during expiration, you hear even wider splitting during inspiration, and that's called wide splitting. And so for ASD, which we call fixed splitting, um, we're going to have to walk through the physio physiology a little bit more carefully to understand why you don't really see a variation in the timing between A2 and P2. All right, so let's go back to the diagram. So here's our respirogram, and on the bottom is the phonocardiogram. And what I've done here is create an ASD. So now there's an ASD between the right atrium and the left atrium. Uh, and before we talked about how the right ventricle expands when you take a breath in, but now we have to think through that a little bit more closely. And we have to think about what the sources of blood in the right ventricle, that is to say the sources of blood that fill the right ventricle from the right atrium, are. So you can get blood from the inferior vena cava or the superior vena cava, which are these two little blue arrows. And you can also get blood from the ASD, from the left atrium to the right atrium. So the right atrium 
can fill with blood from the vena cava and the left atrium, and therefore the right ventricle can fill from, with blood from both of those. And what we're going to do now, just to make this a little bit more visually easy to see, is uh, just make one blue arrow to represent vena cava filling. So there's the one blue arrow, and you can see here I've just drawn it to be about, not about, exactly the same size as the left atrium. So as an aside, now the, the right atrium is getting a certain amount of blood from the vena cava. An equal amount of blood is coming from the left side. So if we were to do a QPQS, that would be a QPQS of 2 because basically um, the, uh, the systemic circulation is matching the pulmonary circulation. Okay, but that's not really that important for this. So here's what is important. Even at baseline, even at expiration, because of the shunt, the whole right side is big. So at baseline even, the right ventricle is big. So the, the right ventricle is already sort of dilated and has a lot of flow through it and a lot of blood. And uh, what happens is at baseline then you get splitting, right? Because the right ventricle is big. So the pulmonary uh, valve closes late even just when the patient is at expiration. That's what I mean by baseline. So you already hear splitting. So now let's imagine what happens uh, with inspiration. Well, when you take a breath in, the right ventricle is already really dilated. So when you take a breath in and drop the intrathoracic pressure, you do get an increase in um, venous return from the vena cava. And it's only a little bit increased because it's already increased. Uh, so, so that's one factor. The other factor is that now that you have increased blood return, what you're actually doing is decreasing the amount of shunt. So you get a decreased amount of shunt, and this adds up to this purple arrow. And it turns out that more or less the amount of um, blood flow that comes into the right ventricle, even at uh, inspiration, is pretty much the same. It's unchanged. So it's still a lot, but it doesn't get to be even more. And so that's why you get no change in splitting. Now, it, I, I suppose this doesn't have to be that, you know, the relationship between the increase in the SVC and IVC flow is exactly matched by the decrease in ASD flow, but uh, that's been shown empirically through, you know, studies that were done uh, in the 50s and 60s uh, that th this relationship holds up pretty well. So basically, since there is no change in flow, there is no change in the splitting, and that's why you get a fixed split S2 with an ASD. Okay, so now we have the S2 splitting patterns, the normal pattern where during uh, expiration you can't hear the splitting, but you can hear the splitting during inspiration. That's normal. Uh, with left Baldner branch block, you get paradoxical splitting because the uh, left side uh, ejection time is delayed so far that it's beyond the pulmonary ejection time. Right bundle branch block where you get a widening of the normal splitting, so basically you could think of it as an exacerbation of the normal physiology, and ASD where you get fixed splitting. So just one other thing to kind of keep track of when you hit the wards is that oftentimes people will sort of say mix up saying wide splitting and fixed splitting, uh, but that's really imprecise terminology. Sometimes people will say right bundle branch block gives you a fixed split S2. What they're trying to say is you can hear the splitting uh, during expiration and inspiration, but you're going to use the right term and call it wide splitting and use fixed splitting for ASD. So those were S2 splitting patterns. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.